Welcome to We're Only Human, a podcast focused on blending research and practical advice to help today's HR, talent, and learning leaders improve business outcomes. Let's welcome your host, Ben Eubanks. Vendor demos. <laughs> They're a necessary part of the buying process, but sometimes they aren't handled in the best ways, we'll just say. That goes the same for the wholesaling process, really. Buyers today are more informed than ever. They do their preliminary research, they screen in advance, but at the same time, they might need some help. They might not be experts or pros at selecting new technologies. In today's episode, I talk with a friend and a colleague that has seen hundreds of demos, and we go through some of the best practices and tips for vendors that want to do this right. Practitioners will find it valuable as it highlights things to look for, how to set expectations with vendors, and more. Really think about it. We're people, obviously. Buying and selling are both incredibly personal activities, yet it's easy to let scripts and processes get in the way of that connection. So, by the way, if you have a huge pet peeve around vendor demos, uh, the sales process, something else in this episode that resonates with you, be sure to share the episode on LinkedIn or Twitter and tag me. Tag me in there, at Ben Eubanks, so we can help our vendor partners out. Or maybe you want to be a little more direct. That's that's fine, too. Feel free to send the link of this episode directly to your own vendors, your own sales reps, your own customer account managers as a way to help them up their game. Let's start a service, resol- a service revolution, shall we? My guest today is George LaRock. He's the founder of HR Wins and an incredibly sharp analyst. To be truthful, I never walk away from a conversation with George without feeling smarter and more informed, and I know you're going to feel the same after you listen in. Now, on with the show. Hey, everybody. It's Ben Eubanks, host of We're Only Human. So uh, I've been excited. Recently in a uh, Facebook group I'm a member of, someone asked a question, which is pretty simple, but the answers were spiraling all over the place, and they said, how can vendors improve their demos? And again, the responses range from humorous to angry to highly practical kind of ideas. And I'm actually here with George LaRock. He's the founder of HR Wins. We're going to discuss that list. George is also, in case you didn't know it, the president of the Venue Banks Fan Club, one of his better titles. So, George, welcome. (laughs) I'm excited to be here and see how the magic is made, Ben. Oh, goodness. Absolutely. Well, it's it's not made without you here, George. So, I appreciate (laughs) you joining me. Um, Again, it's... Tell me a little about the Facebook group first, because I know that I think you're one of the, the moderators in the group, or the I, I, I don't want to even assign you a title with that. So tell me a little about it, because I found out about the group through you, and I really have enjoyed keeping an eye on the conversations and everything else. It's a great source of news for me as someone who kind of studies the industry, and I know a lot of practitioners appreciate it too. So tell me a little about it. Well, it's called Talent Product Plays, and uh, it, it, funny story, you don't, you don't want to assign me a title, but Martin Burns from Hire Clicks created the group, and before there was anybody in it, you know, he added me to the group and assigned me the other moderator role. So there are two hmm. moderators, Martin and I. I got a notification saying, hey, you're the moderator of this Facebook group. <laughs> and this goes back to day one. So you do, I was assigned, uh, but it's, so I've learned a lot about Facebook groups. It's a private group. It's made up of um, uh, practitioners and uh, vendors, technologists, everything from CEOs, uh, from some of the leading vendors to product strategists, salespeople, marketing people, support people, every little bit of everything. And HR and talent focused professionals and we, it's closed. We do vet the group. Uh, so uh, we keep, we try to keep the bots out. Uh, we have had to kick a few people out that um, you know, it, it, I've learned a lot about Facebook. Let's just put it that way. So yeah, it's, it's a lot of fun and I've had multiple people tell me that they go to it for, for their source of um, information, market information, which I, I um, is really cool because it's become a labor of love. In a way. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, you spend some, you spend a lot of time there. Absolutely. The labor part has to be part of that. I went back and looked because I knew that we had crossed a, a milestone as a group earlier this year and we crossed a thousand members not too long ago. So I know that that was a, an exciting thing and watching your, watching your baby grow up a little bit. So Again, this was one of the conversations that kind of spurred this idea to, to talk today. You are somebody that I, I respect and I appreciate your opinion. 
And so I, I thought that you'd be a great person to kind of talk with this because I know that with your clients, you give advice on this with, you know, uh, I saw you at the stage um, at HR tech giving advice on this. So there's, there's a lot of good things to go around. So we'll just kick off. There's actually, there are a ton of those ideas again in the, in the thread, but we're just going to go through the top five today and we'll give everybody kind of a chance to digest those. Um, they can submit any that they think, Hey, we missed this on the list and it needs to be in here to discuss maybe on a, on a next episode, if this needs to become a recurring series, giving some advice out there. So if anything rings true, or if you think we missed something, please feel free to shoot a note. Uh, my email address will be in the show notes and you can, you can reach out to me or to George and uh, we'd be glad to consider your idea for the next time around. So without further ado, let's jump right in. The first one on the list, do not demo without context. Talk with that a little bit, George. I think that's, that is the golden rule of, of product demonstrations. Uh, now, you know, uh, I, I appreciate all the comments about my background and we, we share a lot of respect, but l like you, uh, we've both been practitioners before. Mm -hmm. So we've both used technology. Uh, we've both sat in the seat and done the job. Um, uh, I, you know, I've been on the vend the technology vendor side, I've had to deliver demonstrations and now we both, as, as you do, we both receive them as analysts. Um, and it is shocking how many people just show up with a product. And we used to say they show up and throw up. They just, <laughs> they just throw features at you. They have no idea who you are, what you do, what your role is, um, it's just, you know, they, and I think in their mind, they're just doing their job and they're going to let the product talk for themselves. Um, and you can spend literally hours doing that and not address um, the key issues that the, that your audience has that the answer, the questions they have. So a context is everything right. in in, in relationships and in, in business dot communication, I, I think, um, well, I think yeah. you made the, you said the right word there relationship. It's not, if, it, if you want it to be a one way pitch and the other person just receives that and then makes the decision at the end, then the decision is probably not going to be favorable. <laughs> I just got to give you a warning, a little heads up. There's an insider tip. If you're just going to throw it at them and then wait till the very end and say, okay, now did I answer your question? Did I, you know, how to solve your problem? It's too late. You, you had that chance at the very beginning to, to talk through that or even before you get on the demo, understand what their problem is a little bit, understand what their challenge is, you know, even if it's just at a very high level and knowing, hey, in your industry, we typically see this as a challenge, you know, the more time you can take understanding what it is prior to hitting the, the first button to log into that demo account and start showing them around the product, the better success you're going to have, the better reception you're going to have because the person... Again, think about the feeling when someone is showing you something in your personal life. And if I just assumed, okay, because you're um, um, a middle-aged woman, you probably don't like doing, you probably do a lot of dishes. And so I'm going to start talking about your, your dishwashing pains and stuff. And like, uh, it's just a random kind of thing. Instead of saying, hey, tell me about you. What do you like? What, what do you struggle with? What are your challenges? And then once you get that basic picture of somebody, dive into well, goodness, that's great because that's a fit for what we can do. And so I think that actually kind of leads pretty well into the next, the next point. Point number two is tell me how your situation is going to help me in terms of ROI, in terms of value, in terms of what's it going to return for me in, as a practitioner. You know, if you're going to show me your recruiting system, don't just tell me about all the cool bells and whistles. Don't just throw AI around like it's going to, you know, make my CEO's eyes water, but how excited he is to write the check. Talk about how it's going to help me. Is it going to make us money? Is it going to save us time? Is it going to help us hire better people? Talk about the value proposition that you have. Anything to add on that second point, George? Yeah. And I, and I think it's really for, for both points um, to be fair, the, the, the responsibility, this isn't just about, you know, the vendors uh, it's, it goes, it goes both ways here. Right. Yes. So, um, you know, when you're on the customer side, uh, you're, when, the, when you're the recipient of that demo, you, you should be walking in understanding and to, to, to this point, what is the value that I'm looking for? What, what is the business outcome that I'm trying to achieve? Um, and what will this, what, what factors am I using to decide which vendor to go with? Uh, and those are really the, that's the context that the, the, 
the person delivering the demo should should look for. When I, I did, I've done two panels at HR Tech um, around this demo topic. The first one was with three uh, buyers, three HR leaders. Um, and the second one, the following year was with three, no, I'm sorry, five of the uh, executives from uh, vendors across the HR landscape. And both panels were unanimous in that, that again, back to your relationship point. And it's, it's, you know, walking in, understanding those things on both sides and communicating it um, is, is key. So a little devil's advocate for you to yeah. in response to that. Yeah, I think buyers on the SMB side are probably, again, I don't want to paint with broad strokes, but in general, I've been in this audience. And so I, I, when I was there, they're a little bit less savvy. They might need a little more handholding in terms of, I probably need to share these things ahead of time, or I need some help clarifying what the problem actually is because I think it's X and it's actually Y. On the enterprise side, I would assume and expect buyers to show up a little more informed and ready to talk, talk shop and really able to do that. What's the balance though? Is there a, is there a, how can vendors do that without feeling like they're condescending or, you know, completely, you know, blind and clueless at the same time? How do they respect that, that level of knowledge that that person might have? Well, you know, there, there's a, there is a, there's a bit of a dance that goes on, right? <laughs> so uh, sometimes, uh, and, and, and I, let me back up uh, to, to your, to address your point. I think uh, it, it really varies. So I, I yes. talk to SMB, you know, small to medium sized business leaders who are incredibly savvy and are closer to the business and really understand what they need to get out of uh, any particular tech buy, because if they don't, they're not going to be able to make that, that purchase. Uh, I talked to others who um, really have no idea what they're walking into and everything in between. And that also goes for the enterprise space. I, I've been, you know, shocked at, um, you know, big ticket purchases that have been made with no conversation about real ROI. Uh, so, uh, so that's, uh, it, it really does vary, but, and so the dance is getting to understand who you're dealing with if you're on the vendor side and, you know, things have changed that, um, on the vendor side, there used to be a, um, it, it was, you know, the, the, the sales, um, you know, if, if there's such a thing as best practice was, you know, never take out the product until you've got that level of understanding. Well, so now the way things have evolved, the way user sophistication has increased and the way technology is, is really a bigger part of our lives, that's different. Sometimes you have to use the product in order to begin that conversation and then pause once you've established a, a, a base level understanding um, and, and go a little deeper in the conversation now. So it's, it's one of these things where you, it, it's really about, you know, doing whatever it takes, <clears throat> negotiating, um, the conversation, right? It, it, not even not negotiating, navigating the conversation to understand that you're trying to, to, you're trying to do the best thing for your audience. Absolutely. I, when I think about the vendor demos that I see now, again, not as a practitioner so much, um, the ones that I like the best, they might at the beginning give me a, a heads up of we're going to cover these kinds of things. You know, they, there's always the, hey, stop me if you need something. But um, the ones that are best are the ones like you just mentioned, where at some point through they'll stop and say, okay, that's kind of the, the basics. Which area are you most interested in? Is analytics your thing? Are you yeah. really curious about you know, this other feature? We can dig deep into that and I can show you how that works and do a use case. And I mean, they can get really deep in an area that I care most about. Or again, I would, I would hope that they do that on the practitioner side because again, that person that's sitting there might have a very specific thing that they're looking for. They don't need the peanut butter spread of everything. They're like, hey, I'm, I'm pretty good with this general overall feature set you have, but I really need to know about these three things because in terms of our company, these are priorities and they're non-negotiable. So it's really getting into that is a good point. All right, moving right along. Number three, be honest and learn and share your limitations. You can't be everything to everyone. Um, it's funny. I heard a, heard a story last year, sorry, this year, I heard Adam Grant speak 
really, really sharp guy. And he was talking about an investor pitch meeting. And this guy had amazing success raising funds for his company. And the title of his deck was 10 reasons you should not invest in my company. And so he went through and talked about if you, this is you or if this is what you're looking for, this is not the kind of startup we're going to be. And so he was able to really quickly eliminate those people that were not interested, were not even potentially a fit, but everybody else has said, hey, that's different, that's unique, that's, that actually is, he's really honest. And so they were drawn to that. And that's the kind of thing that pops in my head when I think about this. We should just, these vendors should really be clear about, we do serve these people, we don't serve those people, we can't be everything to everyone. What do you think? Yeah, well said. Well said. I mean, the, the uh, I spend a lot of time with vendors, uh, telling them they 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 should be polarizing their audience. Uh, they should really understand who they're a fit for, really um, understand where their focus should be in order to uh, move their company forward, move their product forward, uh, and focus their um, focus their their message and focus their delivery of, of a demo to that, to that audience. Um, you know, the, the thing is that's scary, especially for smaller <laughs> vendors. That's it. They, the, the fear of missing out on a deal uh, outweighs uh, the uh, desire to be focused and deliberate and honest with, you know, what the limitations are uh, because there's a, um, you know, this, this mentality of, you know, we will, you know, if we have that opportunity, we will deliver. And um, that's just not fair to the, to the buyer. And it ends up really not being fair to the vendor because uh, when you are trying to be everything to everyone, you sound just like everybody else. And that creates a problem for the buyer because we can't tell you apart. We can't, we've got to, we've got to take you through a process you don't want to go through with your product in order to uncover um, what your value is versus you just being super clear up front with, with what you're going to deliver. Yeah. And again, in the interest of being super clear there, by, by saying, you know what, it doesn't sound like we're a fit for what you need and pulling that plug early, you're going to start building some goodwill there. And if they ever do have that need, they're going to say, Hey, you know what? George was honest with me. He, he told me they weren't a fit, but, but now I think we do need that. And so they can come back around to you. And that's such an uncommon thing in the vendor space. I think would really stand out. Yeah. Yeah. I, I had a, uh, uh, a vendor, I, I won't name them, but, um, you know, they, they were over the period of, uh, you know, a year presenting to me, they presented a few times and they're talking about uh, delivering for large enterprises. And I, I was very direct with my feedback saying, you know, I just, I'm not seeing the scale here around your workflow, uh, global issues, location issues, et cetera, et cetera. I won't get into the details. Um, and the la one of the last meetings I had with them, uh, one of the folks said, well, uh, we've always, our message has always been, you know, whatever, you know, insert comment here. And I said, you don't understand. My problem isn't with your message. It's with your product. <laughs> and it's, 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 you know, that, and that's the essence of the problem, right? You, yes. uh, it's speaking a good game, but not really understanding, um, you know, the context of who you're talking to, the, the, in the context, in this case of scale, um, and, and really just being honest about where you're fit. Absolutely. Absolutely. Awesome. That's oh, good stuff. So number four on the list, moving right along, there was a little bit of controversy about email follow-ups. You know, you get that pitch from the salesperson and then you get into, again, as a buyer, you get in that autoresponder series where you just get hammered once a week or so maybe. And, hey, I'm just trying to get to the top of your inbox, and I'm just checking back in because you're busy and everything else. And there's not like a hard line here. I, maybe you have one. Maybe you're hardcore about something. I, I, I'm not so much because the world depends on those kinds of things. I know personally I appreciate when someone comes back and says, hey, is this, a, is this something you're interested in or not? And if I'm not, then we pull the plug. But if I am and I'm like, oh, yes, you know, I completely forgot about that. Let's, let's jump in and have this conversation. And so there's probably a fine line there about where that works and where it doesn't. But I will say I will call somebody out a little bit. Again, not somebody by name, but 
I saw someone earlier this fall post on that list or on the, on the Facebook group saying that they had been, you know, gotten someone's series of autoresponders, you know, Hey, we're trying to check back in. And one of them came back super passive aggressive in terms of the, the setup of the message and was like, since you haven't responded, I'll assume you don't care about the performance of your recruiting function or something like that. Again, that's might be a little bit out there, but it was something right in your face and the person was upset enough about it to go and post it on the group. So that's, you know, it was pretty bad. And um, so other than those outliers that are kind of crazy there, um, talk about your feeling for that, George. Is there, a, is there a balance for how much is enough in terms of follow-up on the email side? Because I know that, again, salesperson's got to be making sales. We, I, we understand that. But at the same time, what's the, what's the balance? I, I think uh, I think you're right that it's it's hard to draw those hard lines because uh, on my side in my business I'm 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 looking at a couple of products right now and I, I've appreciated a couple of the salespeople <laughs> pinging me because I'm you know I've got a day job and and uh, I need to come back to this um, but on the other hand uh, I think everybody knows when you're being genuine and when. Uh, it is an automated, you know, uh, uh, CRM follow-up email that's going out to every prospect that is in the status of first demo, uh, no proposal, yes. and uh, or whatever their status is, and it's um, it's you know getting those on a on a weekly basis for a long period of time. Uh, there's no, there's very little personalization. It's not genuine. Um, and you know, the example you gave, I mean, you know, <laughs> that's just, that's just, you know, you, you, you're better off just walking away and not emailing than offending the buyer. Yes. Right. Yes. Uh, so, for that one. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, but yeah, there, there's some crazy, crazy practices out there. Um, email is still a primary form of, you know, business communication, especially when you're in a process like this. Um, I think we just need to respect the fact that everybody's overwhelmed with it and try to factor that into the approach and the message uh, and uh, being willing to walk away and being willing to send a message that says, Hey, I'm, I'm not going to send another email um, until I check in back in in a few months to stay in touch. I haven't heard from you. I hope all is well or something. Um, yeah. Sometimes those are the ones people appreciate and respond to. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Like, Hey, this is, this is our busy season. This is open enrollment for us or whatever else. I'm like, I'm not going to respond to you anyway. I don't care if you send me 50 follow-ups in the next six weeks. So just, just wait until it's all passed and then we'll come back and have a, a fruitful conversation, hopefully at some point in the future. But again, it doesn't depend on me dropping everything and, and joining you on the phone for, yeah. for some period of time. Yeah. Awesome. So number five, last but not least, again, if you've enjoyed this, feel free to, sh to, to grab my email address in the show notes. Uh, George's link will be there as well. Um, feel free to shoot us a note if you're curious about these topics. If you want to learn more, if you want to, you know, throw in your own that you think is a, a big pet peeve or something the vendors could do to improve. If you're a vendor and you want to respond like, hey, you know, here's what we do. We think we're the best. And, you know, we'd love to, to hear from you as well. Like, tell us what works really well for you and getting feedback and everything else. But again, jumping back, number five, please, please don't promise a feature and then tell me it's on the roadmap once we get on the phone. Um, I'll say a, a corollary to that is, um, well, goodness, it's on mine. George, take that one while I try to recapture my train of thought. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think, um, I think everybody is interested. This is the world of technology, right? And it's, everything's evolving really rapidly and a feature that isn't there today could be there tomorrow. And if uh, I, I completely understand that, uh, especially for a large enterprise uh, who may have a minimum of a six month um, time frame from start to finish, usually more like 12 to 18 months before a product is evaluated and purchased, there will certainly be releases that are coming up. So there's a, there's a balance between um, educating them on what's coming and promising something that does not exist uh, or will not exist until after they've gone live. Um, the key here is clarity. That's, that's that again. And it's, it goes back to being honest, um, and being direct. Um, everybody wants to know about what you're innovating w with and what, what you're working on and what they can, 
what they're going to get excited about in the future. But it is, it, look, we do this, part, a big part of our job is taking demos and looking at this technology. And we're, I'm really interested in product roadmaps. But um, when you're slipping back and forth in between today's release and vision, and you're not clear about it, uh, it, I get confused. It's like, you know, wait a minute. Uh, oh, I, I thought that, so, oh, so that AI is, you're just, you're just speaking to it. You don't have it or, or that, that analytics. Uh, oh, you don't do analytics. It's a report. Oh, I get it. You know, now that's, that's really frustrating. Um, and I'm not writing a check for this software. Right. So I think that's where my, that's where I go on this. That, that doesn't sound like you've had that exact conversation at all, George. Um, <laughs> No, the, the thing that popped in my head when I said the don't promise me this and then it's not true. Uh, the thing that, the thing that uh, popped in my head was be careful. Tell me there's a workaround for that because that's always a red flag for me, but that's kind of a separate conversation, I think. Um, so I would definitely agree again, especially for the larger, larger companies. It's okay to say, Hey, this is on the roadmap, but the hardest conversations either I mean, uh, in a straight up analyst briefing or an actual demo or whatever else, those kind of conversations are when someone is vacillating back and forth between this is what it does. This is what it's going to do. We think, you know, it's always, we, we hope we can make it do that thing. And when someone is going back and forth in those things, it's really hard to get clear on today. Who is this for? Because I know that you and I both have conversations with, with larger companies that are saying, Hey, you know, who does this well? So we can have a comp so they can go out and shop around and find some vendors. And when I'm, when I'm telling someone, when I'm looking at a technology from that perspective and trying to say, okay, tomorrow, if XYZ company calls me and says, Hey, I'm looking for a performance management solution or a payroll solution that does these things. I want to be able to say this does this without hesitation, not, they talked about that a lot, but I don't think it actually does it yet because there was no product that they showed me, but it was part of the conversation and it was on the roadmap, but I don't know. It, it gets super confusing. So be really clear about what it does and then have that breaking conversation with where it's going. I think that's, that's best for everyone. Yeah. And, and, and there are uh, like everything it's, it's not all black and white. Uh, there are definitely employers who want innovators and they are interested in impacting your roadmap and talking about the possibilities. But, but that conversation usually comes after a clear understanding of what you have today and what you're willing to work on. So it's, it's exactly what you're saying about being clear about what you have. What, when I was running sales teams, big sales teams selling enterprise software, um, we had a little acronym. It's not, it's not mine. I don't know where it's, you know, we all have these, these tools that we use, I don't, we don't, they're, they're just inherent in the, um, in, in to, to sales. Um, and this is another one of these acronyms. So I, I don't take credit for it, but I certainly used it. And it was SWAN, S W A N sell what's available now. That's what, that's what you're here to sell SWAN. And the, the reason I harped on this is because, you know, the vendors that get in the biggest trouble are the ones who can't deliver what they promised. And the, the way you avoid that is by swan selling what's available now. Absolutely. Mm, that's good stuff. That's a, that's a great comment. I think we're getting close to wrapping up. All any, right. Any closing comments or feedback, George, if you're, you know, again, that, that vendor in the audience that doesn't, that, that, uh, um, isn't working with you as a client currently and you're going to say, Hey, you know what, here's the, the one thing that you need to do one piece of advice, go and do this now. It could be as simple as so what's available today um, <laughs> instead of selling me on an, on an idea. But uh, what closing comment would you make, George? Uh, my closing comment would be that, uh, again, it's, it, it is a shared responsibility for the, the buyer and the seller. Uh, we did this, this podcast really sp you know, speaking largely to the, to the vendors out there. Um, so I, I would say, look, it, it's, uh, I, I understand the challenges that come along with uh, taking technology to um, a market where you know, you're not selling technology to IT, you're selling technology to human resources. There, you know, it's, it's, um, 
it's it's a challenge, but uh, the the key is understanding that buyer, understanding uh, understanding that person on the other end of the line or across the table, uh, and then uh, being honest with the, with the product and and th- this can be done. Um, so that that would be my 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 comment. Awesome, um, excellent. Thank you, George. I appreciate that. Thank you, everybody else, for listening in. Thank you to my friend and colleague, George LaRock, for joining me. I'm Ben Eubanks, and this has been another episode of We're Only Human. We'll catch you next time. Thank you for listening to We're Only Human. Please take a moment to share this episode with another HR leader who might see it as a valuable resource in their daily work. For more information about the podcast and to see all our show archives, please visit upstarthr.com.